As of last week, I officially became CompTIA A plus certified. I passed both exams on the first attempt and I got pretty good scores. On my 901, I scored 851 out of 900 and on my 902, I scored 801 out of 900. So a lot of people have asked me what sources that I use because I told them that I studied at home because I don't have time to go to school and uh, I wanted to keep the expenses down. There are a lot of great free resources out there, but if you want to pay a little bit extra and get a little bit more training, then I'll recommend some things as well. So what I used was professormesser.com, which was free. I also bought his course notes. I thought they were a great help. Then I went on Udemy and their courses were on sale. So I think I paid like $10 a, a course for the 901 and 902 from Professor Messer. And I liked him so much that I bought his book, which is pretty big. So I tried to shoot for like a chapter a day. And I also bought a Cybix book, which was directly from CompTIA's website. And I bought that as a digital book. And what I actually did was I divided the PDF by chapters so that it, it was a bit intimidating for me to see like one of 1000 pages that I have to read. Um, so instead of seeing that, I saw like 50, 60 pages because I broke it down by chapter and it was less intimidating for me. So what I recommend you do is you get familiar with the operating systems that the objective says. And there's a lot of questions also for mobile phones. So there's the Windows mobile phone, which I really like, but unfortunately there's not much support left for it. Then you have questions about Android and the iPhone, which I'm currently recording on now. So if you cannot afford to buy all three of them, uh, you could always ask people to use theirs for just a bit, just to do what the chapters tell you to do. I also downloaded Oracle, which is free. So I downloaded Oracle on my Windows 10, which is not included on the exam objectives. And from Microsoft for free for 30 days, you can download their ISO. So you can try their different operating systems. So I downloaded Vista 7 and 8. Even though I used them in the past, I kind of forgot how to get to all the administrative tools. So it was a good refresher to use them. Linux is always free, so you can download any distribution of Linux because pretty much the questions are gonna be com uh, terminal commands. So instead of using command prompt, there are ones that will only work in terminal. I'll show you that in a bit, I'll share my screen. So. What I wanted to talk about was organization, right? So you're going to want to maybe shoot for one objective a day and you're really going to want to kill your objectives. For example, what I did was if I watched it in Professor Messer's video, I would highlight it. If I watched it in a CBT Nuggets video, which I forgot to mention, that's also another good source, I would underline it. If I watched it in Mike Myers's Udemy videos, I would put a line on top of it. So all different symbols, but I would have like a little legend up here explaining exactly what I did. I'll show you on my network plus because obviously I learned how to organize better as I went. So now I'm currently studying for network plus and I'll show you what I did today so far. See, and I wrote a little legend on top. I wrote what these symbols meant by the video to see exactly where I went over the objectives. Now this is good, this can build confidence. It built confidence for me because I went into the exam knowing that I covered every single objective. Unfortunately, CompTIA asks a lot of trick questions. Well, not trick, uh, the way they word them is weird. It's like if Janet has a green shirt and you're sitting in front of her computer and it doesn't turn on, and then Janine walks in, what are you gonna do first? Or they ask you opinion questions like, um, what's best? What kind of screen lock is best for your phone? So 
What helped me with that was I did Mike Myers' practice tests. I bought them for $10. There was three. His wording is pretty good compared to CompTIA's. It's very similar in feel. Professor Messer offers videos at the end of every... offers quizzes at the end of every video. And for practice tests that are also free, I used Packet Prep for iPhone. I use Crucial Exams, which was which I access from my desktop or from Android. And then I used Union Test Prep, which you can actually create a profile and you sign in and it shows you your percentage and what you need help on. I liked that a lot. But in the end, like I said, you're not really going to know what CompT is going to ask you because unless you use brain dumps and I recommend against brain dumps do not use brain dumps because they're not guaranteed to give you the right answer and it could mess you up so you could potentially fail because you were following someone else's advice also don't look at it like you're just doing an exam don't look at it like you just want to pass this exam and that's it you need these skills to do your job let's say you've never worked in IT before the stuff you learn in A+, will help you once you get your first job. But if you cheat and you just get your degree, I'm sorry, you get your certification um, memorizing brain dumps, then when it's time for you to work, you might actually not know what you're doing and you're going to create a really bad first impression. So look at them like life skills. Look at these objectives like things you're actually going to see on the job. Because I'll tell you, I've been fixing computers on my spare time while studying and a lot of the problems I encountered while fixing these computers I covered on the exams and I fixed them right away. Like for example, um, I booted up Windows and it says boot manager is missing. What do you do? And I learned what, I, what to do. I, you know, you go into your recovery tools, you go to the command prompt and there's a, like three commands you could type in. That would fix that right up. So you gotta take it seriously, treat it like a school and respect it because it's a powerful tool that will help you. Another thing I did was I took a little container per objective or per thing that I didn't understand and I created little mix and match games for myself that I would have to like, you know, piece together at the end. So what I would do is I would complete the puzzle, take a picture of it on my phone, try to do it uh, from memory and then compare it to the phone. I kept doing it over and over again until I got them all right and eventually I would put them off to the side and just keep on one side the stuff I kept getting wrong so the containers I had most trouble with. Okay also a good way to do what I was doing to practice was besides doing the virtual machines ask everyone you know if they have a computer that is old or maybe it stopped working or that has problems and before they bring it to a professional see if they can uh, give it to you if it doesn't have important data on it like if they really don't care um, and see if you can fix it using the book or you know in general just to get experience to get some hands-on experience so that when you do simulations because the test gives you I think the 901 gave me three simulations and the 902, if I'm not mistaken, gave me four. So they're not multiple choice questions. They'll throw you on the desktop interface and you're going to have to do certain things that they tell you to do. So you got to be prepared for that. All right, so I'm going to share my screen now and show you how I organized everything. But before I do that, I also did some organization on the objectives themselves because when you purchase the books, if you purchase the books, they do not go in order for the objectives, which is very annoying, but I guess it's because you have to cover certain core concepts before you understand other ones. So what I did was I went through each chapter and before I read it, I would go on the title page and see exactly what it covered, what um, objectives they covered, and I wrote them down so that I knew when I was reading that chapter where to go in the objectives to mark what I've learned. For example, for 1.1, Cybex cover this this on chapters 5, 6, and 13, not chapter 1. So that's good to know. All right, 
let's go on to screen sharing. Here on the right side, I made sticky notes of everything that I read or what video I was on from every single source. I gave myself homework every day, uh, my objective, what chapter to read, what objectives were covered, what quiz to do in the back of the book. I linked videos to Messer and Udemy directly by objective, as organized as possible, as easy as possible. I set up Google Chrome to do all these shortcuts. So I have Professor Messer here, Udemy. Then I have Union Test Prep, Crucial Exams, and Jason Clement's website, which I have not mentioned to you. It's a very good way to study. He makes all these cool little tables that you can drag and drop. Excellent, that's what I used. Here I divided PDFs by chapter to be less intimidating. I downloaded Oracle with the different operating systems that you can get for free for one month from Microsoft's website. Linux is always free. Open up Linux. You can actually use the terminal to do the commands that they talk about in the objectives and learn. Also, you're going to want to study in a quiet room. Not the same room that you play video games in or watch TV. This is the kind of room that as soon as you get in that little space, you get in the right state of mind, you're ready to study, you get your thinking cap on and you really learn the material. If there's anything that I did not cover that you would like to know more about or if you need help at all, just please put it down in the comments. I would be glad to help you. I think we all deserve to succeed and I think you chose a great field. An IT technician solves problems and they there's a whole world of problems out there. We got to fix them. So good job and good initiative for trying to change your life and make it better. So let's get out there and go get them. Good job. Thank you for watching my video.